Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new episode of Catholic Table Talk. I'm your host, William Sabor. As you can see, new location, new microphone. Getting really excited about that. So really having a couple problems with it. Otherwise, the microphone looks to be in good shape. So today we t- well, we will talk about Joseph Stalin the leader of the Soviet Union during World War II, and his daughter, who became Catholic after his death. First of all, thank you again for coming on board with me today. If you have a way, subscribe on YouTube, Catholic Table Talk, like us on Facebook, tell your friends and family. Um, if you have any show requests, please drop them in your comments on Facebook or YouTube as well. And hopefully you like episode three. So, with that being said, let us begin. The story from the National Catholic Registry newspaper. If you have it already, check them out. I would say please do that. When Joseph Stalin's daughter became Catholic, Sylvania Stalin, the daughter of the dictator Joseph Stalin, conformed to Catholicism. Joseph would have not approved. In fact, so, uh, Savannah was reportedly told an editor of the National Review that my father would have shot me for what I have done. Meaning, I became Catholic, my father Joseph Stalin would have shot me to death. Joseph Stalin himself was raised in, the, raised in Orthodox Church. His parents actually wanted him to be a priest. So yes, Kath, uh, Joseph Stalin, was Catholic and his parents wanted him to be a priest. Unfortunately though, his father abused the young Joseph lots and Stalin was described his childhood as having been raised in a, in a poor priest winning household. He came to announce Christianity altogether, reportedly saying, quote, you know, they are fooling us. There is no God. All this talk about God is sheer nonsense and unquote. While in power, Stalin did everything he could to crush Christianity, closing down thousands of churches, torturing, killing, and imprisoning Christians. Christians. This is the man who was reputed to have said, one, one death is tragic, one million is a, is a stack. So you can imagine just the uh, persecution he mounted against Christianity. And then they show a picture of the Cathedral of Christ in Moscow on the ordinance of of Stalin to be born just before Christmas in 1941. And if you go on the National Catholic Registrar website and look up this article, you can see it born right before Christmas. His daughter, Savlanta, once wrote her father, many people today find it easy to think of Stalin as a physical monster. Actually, she says, he was a moral and spiritual monster. This is far more terrifying, but it's the truth. She was right. It is more terrifying because physical, just, you know, it's just physical, uh, Barriness. You get your moral and your spiritual inner uh, self is a monster. Then you could say, um, well, as Catholics, we call controlled by demons. Then it is would be more, um, more frightening. She goes on to say, well, it goes on to say. Stalin established the goal of the five-year plan directed by the League of the Military Guardless in eliminating all religion express, expression in the country. Reportedly, during, report, during 1937 and 1938, well over 168,000 Russian Orthodox clergy were arrested, a majority of whom were shot, and that was just two, during two years. That was the the rest of the war, before, during the war, 
or anything. That was just 47 to 48. Whereas the great singer Sting once pointed out, the Russians love their children too. And this was true of Stalin. Well, one of them anyway. Stalin adored such a banger and was playful with her. As a child, she looked upon her father as a wise hero. When she was born in 1926, her father was already General Secretary of Central Committee of the Communist Party. And anyone she came she came into contact with spoke of her father in strictly tones, in strictly laudatory tones. She later came to understand that few dared to even whisper um, circumcisions. So Wanger found her mother, Nether. Ne Nazadel Ali Eva cold. So the ringer reportedly said that she couldn't remember her mother even hugging her or even complimenting her. So um Stalin's wife wasn't really that great either. Then in night so he okay, let's just back up a little bit. So he was raised Catholic, then he re renounced it. He, re he renounced Christianity altogether, and then he made then he married a pretty bad person, woman, and then who wouldn't even like who didn't even like the daughter, wouldn't compliment her. Then in 1942, when Savannah was only six years old, her mother killed herself, but her relationship with her father remained strong for at least a while. And it uh, goes on. Doubts about her father will soon begin. And still, Sangavanga will sometimes be handed notes by classmates whose mother or father had been disappeared by the state. They were begging her to pass them on to her father. It was an odd thing about the USSR that while so many pain and violence was inflicted on the people by the government, that persisted in believing that Stalin was blameless and that he, if he knew about the abuses going on, he would surely would have stopped them. These children sending notes to Stalin through his daughter simply wanted to know where their lovings were. The dictator coldly instructed his daughter not to act as a post office box. Sounds really nice, right? Later, sent Saying that Vena knows that sometimes even her own relatives disappear. So, like her own family member, her own cousins disappeared. Even then, Saint Vena attributed, attributed it, it. And so did many Russians. As things were, as things which Stalin was either unaware of or unable to fix. But years later, her father would have flatly tell his daughter that her relatives had been killed by simply, uh, get this, because, quote, they knew too much. They babbled a lot. Wow. I mean, that's kind of, yeah, it's kind of like uh, Hitler and the Jews almost. And it's kind of. And yeah, it's communist, not good. He said, and it played into our hands, into the hands of our enemies. You see, the official party line had been that Amna had died of burst Olympics, not her own hand. So, yeah, it played into the hands of our enemies, you see, and the official party line had been that Nada had died of a burst of an appendix, not at her own hand. When Serenita found her first boyfriend, her father considered him unacceptable and condemned him to uh, uh, Garling. Later, she attended Moscow University and received a marriage proposal from a young Jewish, hmm, Jewish, Jewish man 
When she told her father about the proposal, he coldly said, I'm not going to swear, so sorry. Do hell with you. Do as you like. He told her that she could marry him, but only on the condition that her husband never set foot in his house. The two had a son, but the marriage broke up after a few short years. Shortly after, she married the son of a man who had been high, high, high up in the Cameroon. Joseph approved of this marriage, but it too ended rather quickly. So, of course, you got to, you know, like mostly you got to prove um, and go up to the father and you say, hey, can I marry your daughter? And, he, you know, you're like, yeah. Or, or you're like, Stalin, <laughs> no. So, Stalin disapproved basically anyone who was going to propose or who was going out with his daughter. And then finishing up the article, in March 1953, Stalin died. My father, quote, Savannah, Sav my father died a difficult and terrible death. She was there at his bedside for days. His doctors applied leeches. Importantly, he died, he that Stalin died, raising his, fo his fist in anger. The death agony was terrible. He literally choked to death as we watched. So when I woke, at what seemed the very last moment, he suddenly opened his eyes and cast a glance over everyone in the room. It was a terrible glass, insane, or perhaps angry and full of fear of death. Then he suddenly lifted his left hand. The gesture was incomprehensible, incom incomprehensible, and full of magnets, magnets, magnets. Yeah. A few years after her father's death, Selena Vanger changed her name to her mother's maiden name. She said the name Stalin uh, Latter King for years. She now was Selena Aliveva. Joseph Stalin had changed his last name to make it sound stronger. Stalin, which means steel, like the big, you know, steel buildings. Stalin means steel. The name Ayla Eva was a form of Alleluia, which fit Savannah better at that time because in 1962 she was baptized in the Orthodox Church. Savannah rejected the violence of her father of her decision. She wrote, the sacrament, the sacrament of baptism consists in rejecting evil. The lie I believed in. Thou shalt not kill. I believe in truth without violence and bloodshed. I believe that the supreme mind, not fame, men, govern the world. I believe that the spirit of truth was stronger than the uh, ma material values. Material, material values. And when all this hang entering my heart, the shames of Marxism. Lemmyism taught me since childhood vanished like smoke. Savannah was officially out of favor with the Kemian. In fact, when she applied to the state for a marriage license to a man named Banish Selian, she was promotely denied. Savannah so and Bramishan lived together for three years before he died in 1966. He wished to had he his wish had to bring to have his ashes spread on the gate branches on the branches. So she applied to the Camion for permission for permission to travel to India. Much to her surprise, she was given permission temporary to leave the USSR to go to India for one month. While there, Sylvania stunned the world on a when on her trip, she walked into the U.S. embassy and requesting uh, limousism. A, a star American on duty reported to her. They said to her, "Say so you, you so you say that your father was Stalin, like the Stalin." 
She there, from there, she was flown to Rome and then on to Switzerland. She liked Switzerland, but that but it was told that she could not remain there on the condition that she never speak publicly about politicians, about politics. She would not agree to do that. She could not. To remain silent for another 40 years could have been achieved just as well as the USSR, she wrote. In April 1967, Sylvania landing at Candy Airport in New York carrying a manuscript that would net that would have been published in USSR. It was titled Twenty Yet Letters to a Friend, which was about her life in the Soviet Union. It was a huge success and a bestseller. And then just two years later, she wrote another bestseller about her life since defecting title only one year. She was famous, but her personal life was still a wreck. Switching from religion to religion, once again marrying, having children, divorcing, and moving often, she found herself disenchanted with America and wanted to return home. And in fact, she did return to the Soviet Union, but almost instantly regretted it. When she returned to America after over a year in the USSR, she said, I have to leave for a while. How wonderful it is. Savannah, with the guidance of Father Giovanni Garbello, read books by Catholic authors, and on December 14, 1982, she converted to to the Catholic faith. Savannah wrote about her conversion, Only now I understand that the wonderful grace that the sacraments of penance and the Holy Eucharist pronounce. No matter what day of the year, and even on a daily basis before, I was unwilling to forgive and repent. I was never able to love my enemies. I feel very different from before. Since I attend Mass every day. So, I mean, just, just, if you're Catholic or you're not Catholic, I, I mean, that's really strong. She said, I was unwilling to forgive and repent. I was never able to love my enemies. But I feel very different from before since I attend Mass every day. And that's what we hear a lot in Scripture. Also, just more like our pastors telling us to go to Mass, receive the Holy Eucharist, which is Jesus himself, Repent and believe in the gospel. Love your enemies as yourself. That is a great, I mean, that's, that's a great quote that she had said too. So you might want to look that up. You might want to write that down in your book. And you notes what she said. Because that's basically what Catholics should do every day. If it, yeah, so she added, the Eucharist has given me life. The sacrament of penance with God, whom we abandon and betrayed each day, the, self, the sense of guilt and sadness that invades us then, all this makes it necessary to receive it frequently. So, and also, then she goes on to say, too, which a lot, that's what Catholics believe. That's what we believe. That's what our priest pastors tell us about. We abandon God and betray him a little bit each day. And, but yet, in the sense of guilt and sadness that evades us then. Because we know, either A, we have not done wrong, which we have, but we want to go back to him. And we feel sad, and this makes it necessary to go to church as often as possible. And we see the sacraments, sacraments. And she goes on to say, I was taken into the arms of the blessing of Virgin Mary. Who else could be my advocate but the mother of Jesus? She suddenly drew me close to her. So once again, 
lots of praise, lots of, well, I mean, talking about the Blessed Mother Mary. How she would, how she prayed to her, how she asked for her help, and Mother Mary helped her and brought her closer to her and also closer to Jesus. And finishing it up, Savannah, I think, I'm pretty sure, sorry for um, all the mispronounced names, but I think it's saying that later, she traveled to Europe and then back to America often. And then she moved to be near one of her daughters in Oregon. In the end, she, didn't, she did not die raising her fist in anger at the world as her father had done, but peacefully, in Wisconsin, in Wisconsin nursing home in 2011, where she had enjoyed sewing, reading, and surely praying. And once again, that was in that article from the National Catholic Register when Joseph Stalin's doctor became Catholic. How, how, an inspiration is that to all of us who, you know, who will say, oh yeah, you know, I could go to mass every day. You know, I, I kind of want to do that. Here she is, not really the best childhood. Um, her dad, Joseph Stalin, the, one of the biggest dictators known to man, uh, killed thousands of Christians after himself, he himself was, was Catholic during his childhood. He turned away from his faith. He lost hope. He believed there was no God. And he just did his own stuff. He, he was greedy. He wanted power. And quite frankly, quite frankly, he got it. While his doctor thought he was a hero at first. But then came to realize not so much. And then she became Catholic. And then to what and then you know Catholicism had a big impact on her life. Whether it was you know Jesus, uh, Blessed Mary, Mother of God, a lot they all had a big impact on her. Why? Because she believed in them. She prayed to them. She would attend Mass every day and pray and worship. So, I think she really doesn't matter where you come from, who you are. We all are made and created in God's image and likeness. We are our children of God. Doesn't matter if you're Catholic or not Catholic watching this. So that's the podcast for today. Hopefully you all liked it, learned lots from it. Really excited about coming up. We got a few great shows coming up. Don't forget, subscribe on YouTube, like us on Facebook. If you have a comment, question, please leave it below. I'll get back to it. As soon as I can. Also, if you want to know more about Stalin, kind of during and after the war, we might have a podcast coming on this book too. It's called This Information. A former spy chiefs reveals secrets and strategies from the undermining freedom. That's actually this information. Much must read. I like it. It kind of goes through how Stalin, um, how they didn't really like Christianity during and after the war, as that's where that's where Hitler's Pope came from as well. So it, that's all in that book. Um, so if you like it, if you want to learn more about Stalin, please do so. And like I said, maybe we'll have a podcast about it. Okay, everyone, we gotta go. That's it for today. 
Sorry for taking so long, but hopefully we'll be back better than ever next week. Until then, may God bless you and your family. And this is William Sauber. Come join me at the cafe, at the table next time. And we'll see what what episode we'll have next. Until then, we'll see you around on Catholic Table Talk on Catholic Table Talk podcast.